the narcissistic mother and guilt trips. Narcissistic mothers love to guilt trip. It is a really juicy tool that they use to manipulate and control you. My name is Lise Colucci and I'm here to help you understand, recover from, and transform your life after being around toxic people, being raised by narcissists and all that, okay? Guilt creates reaction. Guilt creates a response in you to give back to her, okay? It creates a, a power dynamic and a control from her towards you so that your focus goes to her, even if it is just you fighting off the guilt, okay? It makes it so your mind's on her. And that's exactly what she wants for the rest of your life, right? It's in the way they gaslight, you know? It's things like, I never said that. That was not my intention. I only want what's best for you. How could you think I would be that way? It's the way they say these things after they've come after you, after they've said some rude comment, after they've dismissed you. And then the way they say those things is so guilt tripping and creating so much pity toward them from either you or the world around you toward the narcissistic mother that it's highly effective and that is why they do it. And so we have to learn to separate from this guilt and to see that this is her manipulation tactic. This is her go-to for how she gets her way. So let's just give some examples of what that looks like. So say you're trying to confront them about something or you're trying to just state your side of something. They might say something like, what's wrong with you? You make so much out of everything. In a dismissive way, they're guilting you into letting go of your side of things and forgetting everything is even going on and going on with your day. And you walk away and you're like, wow, I didn't even get to say what I was trying to say. She didn't hear me. And not only that, but now you feel a little bit guilty for even bringing it up. She says things like, that was not my intention. That is not how I meant it. I didn't do that while you're telling her what happened, right? So she's gaslighting you in a way that is very like she's the victim. So they might make you the reason that anything bad happened in their life. You know, your father and I got along great until we had kids. Or, you know, I was really doing well in my career and then I had children and I had to stop my career and then I could never really get back into it the same way. It was just, it was always so difficult because my focus was always on you guys. Or, oh, here's a good one. You are my life. You are everything to me. How's that supposed to make you feel even as a little child? Oh my gosh, the burden of your, ex your everything lies on me? You mean I'm supposed to be there to love and protect and take care of you when I'm the child, <laughs> right? So you are my life says I've given up everything for you. How is someone not supposed to feel guilty about that? You know, I've heard that statement said by toxic mothers and they say it in a way that they actually think that's a good thing to say. You know, I sacrifice everything for my child. They're my life. When in fact, what that means is I'm controlling every move that child makes and I'm not letting them think for themselves or be their own person. And I am going to lay all my burdens on them. And I use them as my counsel and I use them as my friend and I use them as everything so that I have someone who worships and adores me out of fear. Okay, that's pretty much what it is. Another thing that when that doesn't work or if they're not getting their way, you're ungrateful. A narcissistic mother will talk to you about how ungrateful, how selfish, how, how self-centered you are, probably from the time you're little, right? And especially if you're an adult and you're trying to have a life for yourself and you're not always available to her or even if you are available to her way more than you want to be, she is going to say things to force that availability, like you're ungrateful, you're selfish. Oh, and another one, you should be ashamed of yourself. You should be ashamed of the way you're talking to your mother. You should be ashamed that you didn't show up for whatever event. You should be ashamed, right? That isn't true. We know that isn't true. You have a right to your boundaries and to when you choose to be around people and to how much you choose to talk to people and all of that. You are not responsible for her well-being in her emotions, okay? And she is guilting you with telling you to be ashamed of yourself. 
I mean, that's blatant, right? And you know, when we're talking about this and how toxic mothers guilt you, I realize that there's like a lot of triggers that are going to come up as you're listening to these stories. It's kind of validating and triggering at the same time, because yes, that is the reality that you've lived. So know that there is help available. You know, this is something that when we're in group coaching, it comes up a lot. The toxic mother, the toxic father, the toxic upbringing, the narcissistic parents come up a lot. So if it is something that you need help with, please check out the information in the main description of every video because there's info on group coaching, coaching and peer support. All right. So let's keep going and talk about some more examples of guilt tripping mother narcissists. Another thing they might do is when you're having a problem and you bring it up to the family or you're having an issue, you bring it up to the family. You know, you're really, really just attention seeking. Look at you, attention seeking. What does that do? It makes you feel like, wow, I can't even talk to my family about a problem. I guess I am attention seeking. You're so, you're a prima donna. You are an attention seeker. You're a diva. You're this, you're that, right? You're always so dramatic. You're always so sensitive. These are the things she'll say to both dismiss you and guilt trip you into controlling how you behave and what you think about yourself. See, the thing is, if you think these things about yourself, she's the only one you have. Because then she can later say, what is it, honey? Tell me the problem. You see, or Yes, well, I know. I, I've listened to you your whole life. I listen to these problems. No one else does. Because see, she's made you think that no one, no one's available to you. And you're not worth the availability anyway, except for when it comes to her. And that way, she has someone always running to her for the answers, which gives her a sense of power and control. And remember that narcissistic mothers place themselves in the role that they want to be seen as. And that's the role that they play. They're not authentically mothering. They're mothering from a role in a position that the, what they want the world to see them as, and they want to believe they are. So it has nothing to do with their children. Another thing they might do when you are low contact is a narcissistic mother might say things like, well, you know, I'm not going to live forever. Is this how you want to treat your mother? Do you, do you really want to create these problems between us when, you know, or feigning illness or exaggerating illnesses they already have, or when they do have an illness, guilt tripping you about it, telling you that, you know, you were never there for them and, and you caused all these problems and you make them sick and all of that. So yeah, that's pretty bad. If you call them on their behavior, they will say things like, I am not capable of lying. I tell the truth all the time. I'm known for my honesty. You see, they're planting a seed. And then what does that make you feel like? Well, a little bit guilty that you just called her something that she's not and that you are irrationally because she's told you that you're irrational making a statement about her. So the thing is, they use so much plausible deniability in the way that they say things. So they say little half truths and they say partial truths and they create situations where, yeah, that is a little bit true. Okay. So another example is a narcissistic mother starting an argument, creating drama, you know, just digging in, going for it, coming in hot and you holding back, you're holding back, you're holding back. Okay. And then all of a sudden you're cornered and you react, okay? You react because it's just so much. It's been so many years of the same nonsense, right? And you go into a reaction and then instantly she flips into the victim. So she's laying into you about anything, whatever it is, blah, 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 yeah, and then calling you names, whatever. And then you say, stop, enough. And you turn and you face her with a reactivity. And then she says, Do you, how could you treat me like that? Oh my gosh, I thought you were going to hurt me. You are so cruel and, and starts to weave in how much of a victim she is into the situation and how she didn't do anything. She was just pointing out something she's super concerned about in your life and you attacked her. And so that guilt, even though you know it isn't true, it's this bizarre cognitive dissonance that goes in your head where it's like, yeah, I know I didn't do that, but oh my gosh, did I? I did react to her. I did get reactive. I did have a response that was big or angry and she's right. And so then there's guilt, but the truth is you were baited and you were cornered and you were gaslit and you were attacked by your own mother. And then she flipped it on you. And then oftentimes they'll do that 
exact thing when there's witnesses, but they won't let the witnesses really see the hard part where they're attacking you. They will move themselves into position and then let you react, right? Or, or call a friend right away and say, can you even believe they did this to me, right? So the person hears the sadness and the grief of this mother who's just been so affronted by her child instead of hearing the whole story, which is that the mother was coming after you for 25 minutes and you said, stop, right? So when they play victim, it is the biggest guilt tripping ever. So you guys, if you're liking this content, hit the thumbs up and hit subscribe and let me know in the comments if there's any other topics you want me to cover. Because as I said, this was a question from somebody who was watching a video and said, hey, I get all that stuff, but can you give examples? So I said, sure, let's do it. So know that the low contact, the no contact, and the staying distant and setting clear boundaries through intentional being clear about what you're okay with and what you're not, and letting that guilt sort of wash over you as you recognize it was never yours to begin with, okay? And get the help you need if you're struggling with this because it's a big one. It will keep you hooked in to that narcissistic family pattern and to never being able to have boundaries or never being able to have any life of your own outside of it, okay? It can go on for a long time. I've talked to people with narcissistic mothers who are in their 90s, okay? And people who are young and people who are older and all the way in between. And this guilt tripping thing seems to be a number one grasp on your life that the narcissistic mother has over you. So working through this, super important. Okay, if you guys need help, as I said, check it out in the main description of every video. And we'll be back to talk more. If you have any examples of gaslighting, let me know in the comments. Talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye.